Maybe to uh, settle ourselves a little bit, we could sing something together. Let's sing, you know this one, I think. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How church family business and uh, we welcome you if you're visiting with us today. Uh, we are active and so there's always something going on. The bulletin is the best source of real-time information about what's going on in our church family. I invite you to be looking in there for opportunities. We also have a brand new <coughs> newsletter that's come out for the month of February. <coughs> I thought it was January coming up, but it turns out it's February. But take a look at that. There's copies of this that are printed out at either one of the entrances. I am going to also let you know that there's information about a revival that's happening at Pine Valley early in February. There is a date that we're going to take a bus of people on February 7th. It's a Wednesday. The sign up for that bus is over here. We already have about a half a bus full, so if you're waiting till the last second, well, get on that bus. All right. There's information here in your uh, newsletter about the 
Ash Wednesday service that is combined with our friends at uh, Brunswick Island Baptist Church. The last couple of years we've done that together here as an evening service. Make sure you see that that is an after, uh, late morning service at 11 o'clock along with a luncheon and there's a sign up list over here if you'd like to donate some sandwiches or some cookies or both. But there's information again in your newsletter about that. I want to uh, have you see a video that the youth made. It's raw footage. It's not highly produced, but I think it will uh, give you some information. The video has to do with getting you aware of the fact that there's going to be a youth mission trip uh, that Sharon's invited to be part of coming up in July. So when this video is over, I'll just point you uh, to a little bit more information. And I just the first time for you to see this. So okay, let's check this video out. Hey guys. What's up? Nothing. Yeah, clearly. Seriously, what's going on? We just feel useless. Why do you say that? Well, we keep talking about our faith. You're always telling us our actions speak louder than our words. That's right. But we keep trying to find ways we can serve and make a difference. Yeah, but there's nothing out there that we're actually able to help with. Why do you say that? We're just too young. At least that's what we've been told. <laughs> well, that's not what the word says. In Jeremiah 1, 6 through 8, it says, Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. And then Paul says to Timothy in his letter, do not let anyone look down on you because you were young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. If that's true, how do we find opportunities to serve? It's not like Paul's writing us letters. True, but what about Jeremiah Project, or JP as I like to call it? What's it about? I've never heard of it. Well, Jeremiah Project focuses on the Appalachian area in West Virginia where we build wheelchair ramps and decks and porches and, and help the elderly and the disabled with all kinds of projects. We even get to speak into their lives spiritually and, and their well-being. I mean, we do it with probably 50 to 60 other students at the same time for a week every summer. Wow, that sounds perfect. Yeah, how do we sign up? All right, how do we sign up? That's the last thing that was said. There's a little slide here for you to see if you're interested in this. Uh, mostly this is for our youth. So if you're in grades 6 through 12, you are eligible for this. Whether you participate in Wednesday night uh, youth group or not, we have just as many youth in Sunday school as we do in youth group, and they're not all the same kids. So you're all welcome. We're only going to need a, a very small adult contingent, but... Uh, looking forward to sharing more with you as this goes along. All right. My last announcement is to, to read to you just a little bit of a thank you note that has come to us from the Boys and Girls Homes of North Carolina. We, through our benevolence and community partnerships, have been able to continue giving them significant amounts of money so that they can do their projects missionally. So this says and it's addressed to you because of you the youth in our care are having a safe family focused christmas it's a little it's a little dated they're having a fo family focused christmas full of heartfelt gifts teen mothers living at boys and girls homes are learning what it means to have a stable christmas with their babies for the first time our foster care team is recruiting sorely needed foster parents to care for children just in time for Christmas. Just by giving, you provide these children with hope for healing and the strength of family. 
Thank you for being a generous giver to Boys and Girls Home and be blessed this season. That's good. We're all in this thing together. You'll notice in your bulletin on the inside we have a prayer list underneath the advertisement for the revival. I'm going to read this prayer request. I'm not going to give any details about any of these. If we start going down that road, we will always spend at least a half an hour. But if you connect with our prayer group that Miss Larry has uh, kind of shown leadership to, or if you get attached to our SMC Prayers Facebook page, you will, you will know more, and you can always come and, and see me as well. Join us this week in praying for Syl and Doc Farrell, Lucas and Skyler, Truett West and Joanne West, Tony and Lori McWhorter, Linda Stevens, Mark Gray, Debbie Duke, Lee Morris, Ruby and Jarris Harmon, Dolores Miller, Carol Reynolds, Fred J. Duncan, the family of Wanda Fox, Doug and Sue Chapman, and I'm going to read uh, also this morning, Thomas Carter has been added to our prayer list as well as my little brother Randy, Randy Pagan. And this week the persecuted church in the world that we are praying for is are our Christian brothers and sisters in Malaysia. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are a living God, that you are active in our lives, that you are our Father, and that we are your children. We give you praise this morning as we've gathered together in this place where this part of your body this church family has come together to be family, to love one another as we love you, and to think about and celebrate our neighbors that we support in different ways through our ministries here. Thank you for the call that you have on our lives. We indeed know, Lord, that you have brought us out of some significant hardships. And I, I truly believe that last week we turned the corner and we're hearing more praise reports than and calls about tragedies that are happening. We praise you for that, God. We praise you for answered prayers, for healings, for people coming out of the darkness, for improvements. You are a mighty God and we give you all the thanks. We know that you're working through doctors. We know that you're working through medicines and nurses. We're grateful for first responders and people who answer the call to help when we need that help. We know that there are leaders in our church family. We know that there are leaders in our local governments, state governments, national and world governments. And we pray that all would look to you for your Holy Spirit's guidance. Father, we need to be together. And your kingdom has no boundaries. The only boundaries there are to your kingdom are ignorance and cold hearts and cold minds. So as we move forward in that kingdom ministry you've called us to here at Sharon, we look forward to more stories, more testimonies of how you're breaking down walls, how you're healing people, how you're making progress uh, to spread good news in a world that needs to know good news specifically the good news of salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has overcome the grave, who have, has paid for our freedom from sin and death and an eternity without you. Lord Jesus, we, we love you so much. Thank you for loving us first. And as a church family, we pray for uh, this ministry and all the different facets of it, and all the different volunteers that have been working on those ministries. We know that we're just one of the lighthouses you have around here. 
So I lift up all our neighboring churches. Wherever Jesus' name is being celebrated, wherever the word of God is being adhered to, wherever people are making sacrifices for your great name, we know that you are there. We know that you're with us. We love you, Lord. And now we pray back to you the prayer that Jesus taught us, disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. good to see you all this morning. It's our time now where we get to sing our praises to him, the one deserving God, the one deserving King. So if you please stand and join us if you're able.
needed that this morning. You need that reminder. He is our way maker, our miracle worker. He never stops working for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. This next song, Trust in God, we've sung it for communion a couple times. But Susan and I just really felt that we needed to sing this as a congregation together. Yes. We need to trust in God. Thank you. 
this morning we trust him father god we trust you we trust you we have people in our congregation this morning that trust you they've trusted you through their trials and they're here this morning trials that they never expected but you've brought them through lord there's testimonies here this morning father that we need to hear father there's praises this morning that we need to hear. You deserve all the praise and glory for every one of us being here this morning because of your Son, Lord. We are here only by the grace of God. And we trust you, Lord, with this day, with each breath, with each heartbeat. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for your presence here. We thank you for your spirit here this morning. We thank you for the lives that are being changed. The, li the lives that have been changed here this morning. The lives that you continue to work on. All of us, Lord, are a continuation of your work. May we be a beacon, a lighthouse, a sanctuary for people here at Sharon, in Holden Beach, Supply, Shalote, Brunswick County. For everyone who's watching, Lord, we love you. Carry us through. Guide us and direct us. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Please have a seat. I'm going to be sitting right there. I invite the, the kids that are here to come and join me. I'd love to spend a couple minutes with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm going to be right here. Ugh. All right. Yeah, lots of you here today, lots of you. I'm so happy about that. It's exciting. I hope I have enough lollipops. I know I've got a good stash in the office if we run out. That's good. People that are here that love you, and they're always bringing me bags of lollipops for you. Sometimes a Snickers bar for me. Yeah. yeah. So I want to talk to you about angels a little bit. We saw and heard and sang about angels at Christmas time, didn't we? That's when we hear about them a lot. We hear about angels at Easter time. We don't talk a lot about them some, in times like this, but do you? Do you believe that there are angels? Good. The Bible tells us there are angels, that they really are God's helpers, and that sometimes those angels are used by God to help us or to give us 
messages to tell us something that God wants to tell us. We're going to do a little uh, test here about what an angel probably looks like. I'm going to show him this picture first. Yeah, I'll definitely show you. Take a look at that. Do you think that those are angels? Wait, based on what you know about angels, do you think yes or no? If you say yes, why? What about these two uh, makes you think they're angels? They have wings. Anything else? The wings is a pretty big giveaway. So if you just say, because they have wings, that's not bad. That's probably as good as most of us could do. I'm going to show you another one. Look at these. Two chubby, baby-like people playing long bugles with wings. With wings. Do you think these are angels? Yeah. It didn't take you very long to get on board with that. They look more these. They look more like angels than those first two? All right. All right. How come? Because I have seen a lot of pictures. Yeah, you've seen a lot of pictures of angels. All right, here's the last one. No. no, no, no. These two guys. No, no. no? That was a quick no. <laughs> I know you can't really see this, but it's just... These two guys. How do you know they're not angels? They don't have wings. They're disqualified. What else? They just don't look like angels. All right. Well, today when I'm reading from the Bible, we're going to read about God sending some angels to talk to Abraham. In fact, God was with the angels. The, both angels and God looked just like men. Just men coming to visit. And it turns out all along they were angels. Is that kind of strange? They were, they were just men. But in, in real reality, they were angels. In the Bible, in the New Testament... In the book of Hebrews, there's a, little, there's a little verse that I want you to be thinking about and maybe go home and talk to your parents or your grandparents or your aunts and uncles. Here's what it says. And I put this in my own words for you, but I think it's accurate. Here's what it says. Don't forget to be kind to people you don't know. Don't forget to be kind to people that you don't know with or without wings. I just put that in there myself. Now, here's the second part about after kind. You never know. They could be angels. You never know. They could be angels. Look out there. Some of those one of them are more Uh, everyone's an angel. Here's how everybody can be an angel. If we do God's work, and if we speak God's truth, we can't necessarily be angels, but we can be like angels. Because when we do the job that angels do, that is working for God, God is very pleased with us and works with us. I don't think these two guys are angels either. But I don't know exactly what angels look like. They could be, they could be angels. Now you're starting to think, maybe they could be. Maybe their wings are just tucked in behind their denim jacket. Yeah, their person. Now you're seeing it. Now you're Because when God tells us to be kind to people we don't know, I think that's important no matter what. What if they're not angels? Still be kind to them, right? We can still, because they might need some friendly smiles. They might need somebody to reach out and care for them. They might need just a little bit of attention to make their day. We can't be angels. 
Angels are angels and people are people. But God can use all of us to spread good news. Let's pray. For angels, and I thank you for the work that they do of helping you. And I thank you for these children who can be very much like angels as they share good news, as they tell people about Jesus, and as they do your work. I pray that you would mature them and grow them. Lord, they don't need wings. Your Holy Spirit lives within them and lifts them up. We love them, Lord, and we know that you do too. I pray for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. about to invite the ushers to come forward as we prepare to give and receive our tithes and offerings. But although not an angel, uh, we have a saint here, R.L., who is going to be worshiping with us through song as the, as the uh, offering is taken. So yes, please, ushers, at this time, would you please come forward? Testing, one, two, one, two. <laughs> Thank you. There is, there, there is a melody ringing. Sing to all who hear. Its message clearly invites us to a life of hope and cheer. Song of Calvary. that Nancy loves. Sweet same old story Telling us of the joy it brings Song of Calvary Perfect harmony Jesus my Lord wrote it for us This song of Calvary
Now let's join together in saying what we believe in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third day, he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Standing on the promises, standing. 
Today's scripture reading comes from Luke 1, 5 through 20. In the days of Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blameless, blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as priest before God, and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or drink or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord, their God. With the spirit of the power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord, Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For the last few weeks, we've been participating in a series of messages having to do with following a man by the name of Abram and his wife Sarai and the interaction between them and God who had called them in their older age to a special mission to get up and to go to the Holy Land, as we would call it, to go to the land of Canaan. Last week we were in Genesis chapter 16. This week we're going to be in chapter 18. But I just want to let you know, if you go back and read chapter 17, which is pretty good reading, uh, you will know that at this point there has been a, an advancement in the relationship with the covenant with God. Abram is now given the name Abraham, which means the father of nations right? And Sarai, his wife, is now given the name Sarah, which means noble woman or princess. And their son, born to them through their servant girl Hagar, by the name of Ishmael, is now 13 years old. Remember last week, Ishmael was born. He's now 13 years old, living with Abraham and Sarah as their son. Also, the sign of the covenant was given to Abraham, and all of the men and all the boys were circumcised in the flesh as a sign of their covenant. And so that covenant became a little bit more serious as well. Usually when I talk about that, the men are squirming out there and crossing their legs. But I invite you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 18 verses 1 through 15, and I would just say to you that this is kind of a parallel to the New Testament scripture that was read by Brian so well just a few minutes ago. How many of you know that the God of the Old Testament is also the God of the New Testament? Yeah, it's the same God. It's the same God. 
And what God can do in the Old Testament, God can do in the New Testament. And guess what? God can still do it. God can still do it. There's a couple places here where I'm just going to pause for a moment. But this is chapter 18, verses 1 through 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. I'm going to stop there and say I'm not going to explore the part of this that has to do with two of these men were angels, it turns out. We find that out in chapter 19. And one of them was the Lord. This is not a message about that, but for those of you who like looking stuff up, go spend some time thinking about that and praying about that. The Lord appeared with angels. All right. Verse 2. He looked up and he saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them, and he bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you might refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. And so they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and they stood by them under the tree while they ate. I'm going to stand, stop there for a second and just say, you know in those days nomadic people took care of themselves, each other. They took care of each other. And so it wasn't uncommon for strangers to come by. Uh, if they had had buckies, they would have not had to come to this man's tent, but they didn't have buckies back then. If you don't know what buckies means, go look it up. <laughs> Google it. If you haven't been to Bucky's, it's worth a trip. So they, they now are taking in the hospitality of this man who, I don't know if he knew that they were angels and God, but he was showing them hospitality. Then they said to him, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I've grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord, the Lord said to Abraham, why did you laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. This is the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> That's one of my favorite sentences in the whole Bible. Oh, yeah, you did laugh. <laughs> Who wouldn't have? Who wouldn't have? You're 90 years old. 90 years old. <laughs> Some things are just impossible, right? Really, some things are just impossible. And at the same time, sometimes impossible things become possible. I want to read to you a few things that I found with just a little bit of an internet search about people doing things that are impossible. There's a man by the name of Fuja Singh, who's from Britain, 
who began running competitively at the age of 89. He has run at this point 10 full marathons. The last full marathon, that's 26 miles or something like that, was done when he was 102 years old. Impossible. 30-year-old Don Webster, who suffers from something called locked-in syndrome, something happened when she was giving birth to her child, and she, she developed locked-in syndrome. She's locked inside of herself. She can't move anything. She's paralyzed completely, except for her eyes can move a little bit. Well, she has completed a college degree in world history by reading, writing, and communicating with other people using only her eyes and a specialized computer that can read her eyes. That's impossible. Ibrahim Hamato, and by the way, Ibrahim is another pronouncement for Abraham. Ibrahim Hamato, who's from Egypt, is a champion table tennis player. That's ping pong for those of you in the South. He is a champion despite the fact that he has no arms. He holds the paddle in his mouth. And yet he is a champion. That's not even possible. Esref Armagan, who's from Turkey, paints beautiful landscapes and beautiful portraits of people in color, despite the fact that he has never seen anything in his life. He was born blind, and yet he can paint pictures of images in color. Sometime, come see me and I'll show you what he has done. That's not possible, <laughs> but he does it. He does it. Want one more? Sure. Eric Weinmeier, who is an American, successfully climbed to the summit of Mount Everest in 2001. Eric Weinheimer is completely blind, totally blind from birth. That's not possible. Sometimes things that are impossible are possible. I know that doesn't make any sense, but we're here talking about faith. As disciples of Jesus, we're compelled to embrace the truth about this mystery. Sometimes things that are impossible actually happen. In both of our readings this morning, first one from Luke's Gospel and the other from the Old Testament book of Genesis, faithful people are confronted with a supernatural news about God choosing them to do something that's impossible. In their lives and in their marriages. Zechariah the priest and his wife Elizabeth, who was getting well past menopause, were told that they were going to have a baby and we know that she did have a baby. John the Baptist, the cousin of our Lord Jesus. It's not possible, but she did it anyway. In our Old Testament reading from Genesis, Abraham and Sarah went ahead and did become the patriarch and the matriarch of nations of people. Together, she had a baby. That's not possible. In both cases, it seems that these were good people who feared God. In both cases, the wives were barren and well past childbearing age. In both cases, they were told to get ready for a baby. <laughs> Fix up the nursery. Buy some diapers. Have a shower. In both cases, the initial reaction was disbelief. Imagine. <laughs> Sarah even laughed to herself, 
but God called her on it. Zechariah questioned the angel's news, and God closed his ability to speak for nine months, the entire time of the pregnancy. He wasn't able to speak. There were consequences for their questioning God doing the impossible through them. <laughs> In both cases, the impossible became a reality, and God brought new life from old bodies. People who thought that they were well past their prime and usefulness in this world. In both cases, the sons born to them, John the Baptist and Isaac, who we'll learn more about next week, were extraordinary men who played a significant role in our faith history. Thank God that they existed. In the case of Abraham and Sarah, God had already initiated a covenant relationship with them. You will be the parents of many nations. Nearly 14 years old or earlier, they thought that they had moved on with God's promises because they had already arranged for the baby to be born through a surrogate. That's what we talked about last week. 13 years later, with the child... Ishmael 13, standing right there, they were being told, that is not the child of promise. He is your son for sure, but you're going to have your own baby. You're going to have your own baby. They thought <laughs> that they weren't going to have to deal with that, and yet here comes God. All those years later, they were old when he first told them. Now they're really old, and he's coming back at them with the same promise. However, God was going to stick with plan A. And plan A is what happened. How many of us know that and believe by faith that with God anything is possible? How about by show of hands? We, anything is possible with God. Remember that when I say some stuff later. By faith, good Christian people are always supposed to put their hand up. But usually when we put the hand up, we're thinking about how God's going to ask somebody else to do something. Rarely do we think it's going to be us. <laughs> Many of us have lived a long life already. And it's hard for a lot of older folks to even imagine coming out of retirement or getting back into the game. Now I got really quite tired. And some of you have been retired for decades. This is for all of us. This is for all of us. Susie and I watch a lot of situation comedies, little short, uh, funny, funny TV shows. And one of the recurring themes that shows up on just about every one of those sitcoms is the thing about uh, a middle-aged couple or a couple that's becoming uh, old enough that their kids are grown and they come into contact with somebody who's had a baby or is having a baby and either the father or the mother says I want to have a baby I want to have another baby and it's funny because they're not going to have a baby. They've already done that. They've already raised their children. But there's something about the, the whoever's saying it that the, the, they're just being pulled at in their hearts and say, oh, I want to have another baby. And usually the response from the other spouse is, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> and every time this comes across on one of these situation comedies, I look next door to my wife, Susie, and I have to say it. I think we should have another baby. And Susie always looks at me with her eyes kind of rolling and says, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> so we get it, right? Has anybody else ever had that conversation? We get it. That ain't happening. But what if, what if God wants to use us even if we're old. 
Not necessarily to have new babies. But what if God wants to give birth to something new through us, even if we're old? Even if we were old 20 years ago or so we thought. What if? What if God spoke to us? What if God taps our spouse on the shoulder in old age and they get excited about something that God really wants to do through them? You won't believe it, but I think God wants me to. And fill in the blank. What if your spouse got excited about something new, even in old age? How would you react? Would you say, that ain't going to happen? That's impossible. Or would you say, praise God. Praise God. Rejoice. Rejoice. Praise the God of new things. I think some night we ought to have a little popcorn and gather people together and watch the movie from 1985 called Cocoon. Did you ever see Cocoon? Those old people kind of found a fountain of youth in a swimming pool where there were some alien cocoons. They went swimming in there and suddenly these people are just like kids. Wouldn't that be fun to watch that together? Let's do it, Winky says. Do you still have a VHS player? <laughs> now, back to this. What if God gets a hold of one of our kids? Let's not talk about older people. What about one of our children? What if one of our children suddenly is filled with the Holy Spirit and says, I want to do some big things? Maybe go on this mission trip. Maybe go out there and meet some more youth and get things going. Maybe start a Bible study for adults. What if God got a hold, God got a hold of one of our kids? Would we be prepared to mentor them in their excitement? A lot of churches are not ready for excited kids because a lot of people in churches have long since stopped being excited about their faith. It's just the truth. I can go there sometimes myself. I'm getting excited talking to you. Are we prepared to mentor them? I believe in my heart that God wants to do extraordinary things with us here at Sharon. Why else would we have had to have gone through the last six months if God wasn't getting us ready, toughening us up, bringing us together? Why else? All of us supporting one another. All those people that I read about earlier who were doing impossible things had something in common. They had help. They all had help. Not one of them did what they did without somebody assisting them. And I think that's important for all of us as we think about the things that God might be doing with us. It's not about an individual and what God's calling them to do. It's will we come alongside of people who know that it's God. We need to be praying for discernment that it's the voice of God, not the voice of, oh, I wish I could just do one more thing in my life. Maybe you're praying like that, and God would answer that. Or maybe your job is going to be to support that one who really is being called by God. There's not one of us in this room who can't do something that's not even possible if God calls you to it. The resources are available to you spiritually, collectively. RL, you, you've kind of been on death's door about six times in the last three years that Susie and I have been here. And yet, of all the people who stands up and says, I want to play a solo on my guitar and sing a song, it's you today. That's not possible, but it's happening. But we know it's possible. 
because God's not through with you. And you've had help. You've had help. There was some redhead. <laughs> I saw her drive you to praise team practice on Tuesday and bring you in. You had help. I saw the praise team come around you and set you up and make sure it was going to be all right. You believe that the Lord is nudging you to go for it. I invite you to talk to me about that. I would love to hear what, what's going on. Talk to the people closest to you and say, I know it seems like I've been out of the game for a long time, and I thought I would never, ever, ever participate in ministry again. But I feel like I'm being called to do it one more time. Speak your mind. Speak your heart. Talk about it. Pray with people about it. It may be just God, the God of the impossible, calling you to do that impossible thing and watching it happen. To the glory of God. To the glory of God. There's a lot of people around here doing things that I can't believe they're doing, like in a good way. The bus is moving. It's not like I'm giving this speech to a bus that's not sort of moving. I'm just saying in the middle of the move of God that's happening at Sharon, I'm calling it out for what it is. God's doing it. God's doing it. And if God's doing it, we want to be part of it, don't we? We want to be part of it. Glory to God. God could do the impossible. May God give us all the grace to be able to respond and all the resources to be able to respond to whatever it is he's calling us to. Let's pray. Lord, this is not a laughing matter. When you told people in these Bible scriptures today that you were going to ask them to do something impossible, they laughed. They questioned you. And the consequences were significant. But you used them anyway, despite their doubts. And so for us today, even for those who are doubting, I pray that your Holy Spirit would break through and use us for impossible things that are made possible because you're our God and you are mighty. I pray this in Jesus' precious, beautiful awesome name. Amen. Please rise and join us in the singing of our last anthem, Blessed Assurance, found on page 369. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood, this is my story. Submission, all is at rest. I am my 
I'm not going to say, hey, let's all put on our swim trunks and dive into the ocean this afternoon, although that might be fun. Some of you just did that on New Year's Day. But I am saying, if anybody heard that, what I said today, and God sealed that in them, don't hide that from anybody. Talk about it. See what God can do. You said, almost every single one of you, that there's nothing impossible for God. You said so. So you either were lying, <laughs> thought I wasn't looking, or you really believe that. I believe that you believe it. Lord, thank you for never giving up on us. Send us now in your grace and in your vision or whatever it is that you want us to do. Let us not miss any angels among us. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>